James Wooden, Blowing the Whistle on Referee Abuse, Part 1. Duration, 3 minutes and 6 seconds. Referees arguably have the most important job in football, making decisions, ensuring safety and controlling the game. But something that a lot of referees face is abuse. Referee abuse is an issue that spans from the Football League to non-league to Sunday League and even six-a-side football. Here at Goals we're going to be setting up an experiment with referee Cameron Kennedy and John Donnelly. But first I spoke to them about what they've been through as an official and their thoughts on abuse. Um, abuse I wouldn't be able to say on camera, um, language of that sort. Um, I've, had my, um, I've, had, I've had my parentage questioned, I've had my sexuality questioned, um, I've had my, child, my, my, my kids' sexuality questioned, um, anything, anything, you can, anything that you would never ever say in the real world you get as a referee. And it's, it's, people are fine with that. And they say, well, you're a referee, so we're allowed to. But you would never speak to anybody like that in the street. And if you spoke to a policeman like that, you'd spend the night in the cells. I'd say you get, you get some form of abuse every shift. So one, one, one in three games, at least. Um, but it's usually just, you literally can just ignore them, just laugh it off, you can tell them to shut up, whatever. Um, once a month, if I work, if I do maybe one, one every 20 games, you'll get a really bad one maybe every 30 games. No matter how good a referee you are, you're always going to get someone who kicks off. Like sometimes you've got, uh, like you'll give a decision and if you give it that way, then they're going to kick off. And if you give it that way, they're going to kick off no matter what, so. A sim bin has been discussed, which would result in a player leaving the field temporarily to cool off from an incident. John spoke about its potential if it were to be introduced. I think it, would, it, do, it helps a lot. It does. Um, somebody can commit an offence and you think, oof, it's not just a booking offence. Or somebody can get, you can see them building and building, you can, you can see it and you say, look, that wasn't a particularly bad foul, but the way your attitude's going, I really need you to go off for three minutes, just take a breath and then come back on. Sometimes you'll say, oh yeah, that's not our fault, ref. Doesn't matter. I can see a situation occurring. What he did there warrants a booking. So I also want him to go off and cool down and they come on and when they come on they're normally fine they normally say sorry about that ref you know it was a bit naughty then it gives them a chance just to literally take a breath in the next part we hook up cameron and john with cameras to document their evenings as officials and um, we are live coming no 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 it would not have Stephen, walk away hey do you want to take the time down about 40 seconds ago point of interest for you James Wooden, blowing the whistle on referee abuse, part two. Duration, three minutes and 35 seconds. Under the lights at this football complex in Southampton, players turn up each evening to take part in five, six and seven aside football. But for those turning up to goals this evening, there was a small twist in the tale. Our team had hooked up two referees, John and Cameron, with cameras and microphones. And um, we are live. Cool. So, yeah, there you go. The aim was to capture and document any abuse and incidents that referees face by recording their every move. Here are some of the key incidents from the evening with bad language, injuries and disagreements. Wow. Oh, no, Steve, come on, behave yourself. No, 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 no. He was shoulder to shoulder and he was stronger. No, he was shoulder to shoulder. You offered it first and he was stronger than you. You knew he was coming. No, 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 he would not have. Steve, walk away. Not tonight, not tonight, not from you. my own opinion. White ball. Watch him, Jack. Jack. 
Mate, do you want to take the time down about 40 seconds ago? Point of interest for you. Keep playing, keep playing, play advantage. <laughs> What's that, Craig? Bloody good referee, and it was, mate. Yeah, you're right. Uh, so the black player has pushed uh, the white player into the boards. Uh, not too much in it, but it was dangerous, so I just gave him a final warning. That's why we'd be careful in the boards, eh? If I don't think that it, it was his first bad tackle, so I gave him a warning and, and then any more and he, and he will have to go for a blue card. Guys, we'll call it half time for now. It's only 40 seconds early. Yeah, some water. Yes, Luke. Now, you put him down before you tackled him, before you got the ball. Yeah. You pushed him before you did it. Uh, six feet, lads, a couple of steps would be nice. It's direct. Well, manage keeps. Last five of the half, boys. John and Cameron both had successful evenings on the pitch, with most players giving them the respect that all officials deserve, because without a referee, there can be no game. In part three, I travelled to Hampshire FA headquarters in Basingstoke, to speak to referee development officer Andy Moisey about the issue of referee abuse. James Wooden, blowing the whistle on referee abuse. Part three. Duration, four minutes and 14 seconds. A recent survey revealed that two-thirds of referees face regular abuse, but is there anything that's being done to actually combat the issue? Well, the FA introduced new laws at the start of the season which see players banned for five years if they ever went to the extreme lengths of assaulting a referee. Any physical contact or verbal threats will be met with a minimum of a 56-day ban and a £50 fine. Something that's also currently being trialled is a sin bin, in hopes of preventing abuse. After completing the experiment at goals, it was time to head to Hampshire FA to discuss the processes within the Football Association and what the future holds where abuse is concerned. I spoke to Referee Development Officer Andy Moisey. So how big of an issue do you think referee abuse currently is? Uh, in terms of abuse at the grassroots level of the game, I think it's uh, high, higher than people uh, would expect it to be. Uh, however, uh, I think uh, in terms of uh, referee development, what we carry out within Hampshire FA, uh, we have a, 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 a number of teams that support referees uh, and issues that arise, uh, as, as we were discussing earlier on, uh, within the county, uh, as the referee development manager, uh, I, I look after referees within the county, I have a number of uh, volunteers uh, that uh, support that. So what's the process after an incident's happened? The referee obviously files a report and then what? OK, uh, the referee will file a report uh, uh, and that will come into the discipline department. The discipline department will look at the report uh, in detail and ascertain uh, what's taken place. Uh, as I said before, is it, is it poor practice? Is it threatening behaviour? Or is it indeed, you know, unfortunately an assault? Uh, if we take, uh, the, you know, the middle, uh, the middle stance, for example, if we're looking at uh, th threatening behaviour, uh, the discipline department uh, would obviously then uh, uh, ensure that it's got all the information it needs uh, and any other, any other additional witness statements. Uh, uh, from a refereeing point of view, uh, the first thing I would do is make contact with the referee uh, to make sure that the referee is OK. Uh, and uh, identify if there were any other any other issues, you know, that ha haven't already been reported. So again, we can then uh, feed that back to the discipline department and then provide support and guidance uh, to the referee. So, what does the future hold in terms of preventing referee abuse? Currently, uh, 
uh, we're in this trans uh, in a transition period. Uh, dare I say, uh, you, you know, five ten years ago it was acceptable that uh, you know abuse was the norm. Um, we're now in this period whereby uh, people have been given guidance, support, uh, uh, the respect program that, that, that we've discussed, and they understand that you know uh, abuse and unacceptable behaviour from the touch lines is not acceptable. Uh, however, I don't think that's going to change today. I think in 10 to 15 years' time, I think we'll, we will see whereby you've got those youngsters are now who are now starting in the game, who are being brought up uh, in the right manner. Uh, and what I mean by that is when they're playing football, their behaviour, how managers react, how parents react, their behaviours uh, uh, are certainly improving. Uh, so I think you know, in 10 to 15 years' time, whilst we won't have eradicated it in totally, I think we'll see a vast improvement on where we are today. Perfect. Thank you, Andy. Cheers. Thank you very much. So while referee abuse may never be completely preventable, everyone has a part to play to make referees' lives easier, whether you're a player, a manager, or even a supporter. For more on this referee abuse investigation, be sure to visit BBC Radio 5 Live Podcasts.